wrestles not with flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, mm -hmm. rulers of darkness in the heavenly places. So that's what this series is on. Really, if you're going to, I'm using this fancy expression, welcome to the metaverse, but it's really about the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. um, so I encourage you to watch the past three episodes. <laughs> Today is part four, part four, part four, called the living and true God. <laughs> we have to know who the living and the true God is. I've been thinking lately, guys, all these old time words that we feel are kind of religious, it's amazing how they're becoming more and more relevant than ever. In the face of artificial intelligence and social media, the word living God is going to matter so much. And as I've said, you know, guys, we are going, let's just face the reality. We are no longer in a Christian nation. We are in a neo-pagan polytheistic culture. That's true. Um, men and women's hearts, God created us to worship. And that means that there's, there's no like neutral zone in the spirit realm, right? Our hearts are designed to worship. So we're going to worship something. Even just the other day, I was talking to a couple people in the area who own buildings, and they were talking about, oh, we've angered the water gods. because they're joking about it. We're angering the water gods. Maybe we need to pray to the water gods. And I was like, you guys need to pray to the living God, the living and true God. <laughs> it's like, Lord, you got to back up my testimony now. <laughs> so living and true God. So this, this is my key verse today. 1 Thessalonians 1, 9 through 10. We are reading through the book of 1 and 2 Thessalonians this month. So I encourage you to start. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you and how you, and I bolded these three things that just jumped off the page to me, how you, one, if you're taking notes, there's three points, turn to, the, to, to God from idols, two, sir, to serve the living and true God, and three, to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Could you not preach the gospel with just this two verses? Yeah. This is, you want your three steps. If you're talking to somebody, you need to turn to God from your idols. You need to serve. You have to choose to serve God. It's a choice, guys, right? You're here today because you're choosing to serve the living God. And it's like, yes, sir, reporting for duty. What do you want me to do? Oh, I don't want to do that. Well, you can't choose, <laughs> right? Because that's what lordship means, right? You know, in the military, there's a chain of command. What if, what if the, the sergeant told the, the lieutenant, I'm not doing that today? Court martial, right? Yeah. Or reprimand first. So, you know, everything, God's got it kind of hard sometimes. Because <laughs> he has to use willing vessels. Anyway, yeah. turned. Turn. We're to turn to, the, to God from idols. Serve the living and true God. So that's so important now, guys. What God are we serving? We're serving, we're serving the living and the true God. He, he is a bree living, breathing, thinking, passionate person. Jesus is flesh and bones. Jesus is a man. Fully God, fully man. There's a deception in the age that there's Jesus is somehow this you know, metaphysical concept or... This, this thing that comes upon people. or No, Jesus, he's a literal person. You know, I think I shared this in the Apostles' Creed. It says he, he was crucified under who? Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate. You know why that's in the Apostles' Creed? To establish it in history. Our creed is established in history because Jesus came under a very specific government yes. at a very specific time. He was born, he lived, he died, he rose again. And he's seated right now at the right hand of the Father. He yes. dwells in our hearts by faith. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, glory to God. Turn. So today I want to tell you, turn to, to God from idols. <laughs> Sorry, I got a typo here. Who wrote this? Anyway, turn to God from idols. Can you say turn? turn. That's what repentance is. You're going this direction, right? And you have to turn around. You have to turn around to God. Yes. Amen? Amen? We can't keep going this direction when we find that we have to turn. Repentance is turning around. Yes. Amen? So you need to start going to God with all of your heart. Amen? Lord. I think of the, um, the story of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Where the judgment came upon, 
I was just thinking about this the other day, guys. God is, this is the era of grace. Because otherwise that would happen to every city right right now. God would just start pouring out his wrath. But guys, the era of grace is, grace is God's like, I just keep waiting, keep waiting, keep waiting. I'm going to bring judgment, but I have to keep waiting. So remember Lot's wife? Remember what happened to her? Yes. She turned around. Right? They're like, the, there's fire falling, right? Right? However that happened, I don't know, volcano, asteroid, whatever. So they're walking out, right? Lot and his two daughters and... The wife and then she said she turns around because she she was like oh my kitchen right oh my goodness I love my my house maybe my kids all the fashion all oh, that favorite restaurant I have oh my goodness she turned around and she turned into a pillar of salt because her heart wasn't fully you know so the question for us today is if the judgment came would you be able to you know, just think your own life. Would I be able to walk away from everything? Yeah. Family, house, possessions, dreams, bank accounts, Come on. Come on. retirement, and, you know, investments, whatever. Would I be able to, to walk away? Jesus says, we're going this way because that's done. And you're like, okay. We're, are you like, are you going to look back? <laughs> yes. Come on. So we, we need to turn to serve the living God. Amen? Amen. And we... Sometimes we have that, that, that glimmer of, like, we, we see the truth and how, last night, I'll just share, uh, I, was, I had a moment where I just saw, like, God, I'm sorry that I'm so in love with, like, this life. Yeah. And it just really tugs on my heart, you know? Yeah. I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have this. Why isn't life, why, you know, why isn't life, ah, you know? Like, <laughs> like Lord, help me see the eternal. Help me really love you. Not the stuff, right? Not the things, not the what I don't have, what I don't get yet, or what I don't understand, right? Pray that. Say, Lord, change my heart. So, so turn, serve, and then wait. So, you guys, what is your business? Ministry can be very, uh, how many Marthas do we have, right? <laughs> we got to do this. If I do it, nobody's going to do it, right? And Mary's just like, I'm just going to listen to Jesus. You're like, you are a slacker. <laughs> it's like I'm so upset with you. You're just a slacker, lazy, you know. <laughs> and Jesus is like Martha, Martha. This is not my th things get done, but they're not always, you know, in my timing, right? So the business of the kingdom is to wait for Jesus. So we're to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers from the wrath to come. Wrath is coming, it's coming. and guys, it's the wrath of the Lamb. Jesus is the one who's going to pour out the wrath. Yes. That's right. it's yes. But he's also, he's the judge of the living and the dead. And if you're found in him, he'll be merciful to you. So we're to wait for his son from heaven. So that's the business of the church today. So you could tell somebody, turn to God from idols, serve the living and true God, and wait for Jesus. What are we doing today? We're waiting for Jesus to come. Yes. Now there's things to do, right? There's yes. passive waiting, there's active waiting. We should be active. Come on, so that's our business today. Okay, yes. so now I'm going to get on to the rest of the message. <laughs> so tur turn, guys, turn to the living God. If you haven't done with all your heart, do it with all your heart. Amen. The Bible says to rend your heart and not your garments. And I, I really see that as the picture of a, a field that has had other things grow in it, right? Your heart is a garden, and so we need repentance is tearing up that. It's like bringing that big plow through. We saw a big plow, it was yesterday, driving somewhere, just tearing up the field because something else is going to grow there. Yeah. And so that's what repentance is, and it hurts, right? Repentance is going to hurt because yeah. you have to turn away from what you've been doing. Yeah. Maybe give up something that you really love, yes. right? That's, that's what, you know, God didn't ever say this is going to not hurt or be easy. <laughs> whoever preaches easy christianity has got it wrong <laughs> right but there's grace god's grace is sufficient for us amen <laughs> who's with me here okay in this series <laughs> we're gonna have to start preaching repentance more and more you guys amen we have to re pre preach repentance you know, America's got to where it is because of the way churches have preached. That's right. we pre we've commoditized the gospel. We, pre we preach things that sell. And it doesn't change this Come culture. 
Because exactly. it's not fun to tell people in love that they're going to hell. <laughs> That's right. right? So he's, oh, yeah, I'm going to do something easier because I hate rejection. I hate, you know, I don't want to be rejected. I don't want to hurt. I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to be, you know, misunderstood. You know, but that's not, that's not the gospel, right? That's not the gospel. Okay. In, praise the Lord. In this series, we've talked a lot about the thinning of the heavens, heavenly places, and the war in the second heavens. And you'll have to review that on your own time. Ephesians 6, 12, Revelation 12, 7. Spiritual warfare. So this is a great, if you want to get a great book, you can't go wrong with Derek Prince. Spiritual warfare, the title is Headquarters, the Heavenlies, the Battlefield, where? Your mind. Yes. So that means you might not be crazy. <laughs> I was talking to somebody yesterday about this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This personality program, and I'm not going to comment on it, where people really get into, you know, into analyzing their personalities, and it's almost like, Bible, they start quoting, pers my personality type is like this Bible verse right here. It's like, when you start to deal with the psychology and the personality, you know, there might be other personalities you're dealing with. And it's not, your, not necessarily just yours. Oh, sub, sub, uh, side note, people who identify with uh, plural pronouns, they have plural personalities, which means there's demons involved, okay? Like, how obvious does this have to be? <laughs> If you, if you define yourself as they or there, you got demons. <laughs> and we know how to fix that in Jesus' name. <laughs> That's right. So the battlefield is your mind. What have I been talking about? Um, just the heavenly, the heavenly places. You know, the Bible says we're to take every thought captive, right? Yes. So every thought you're thinking is not necessarily coming from you. And strongholds are built by continuously meditating on an idea. Yeah, yes. that's right. That's exactly yes. right. Mm -hmm. You know, why do people become murderers? Because they, the, the anger and hatred festers yes. so long where they start to meditate on it. And then, so whatever, whatever the problem is, you got to forgive. You got to let go, right? You got to, you got to, um, you know... <laughs> Stop. you got to replace that thought. Amen? And that's where the Word of God replaces bad thoughts. Yes. So you can't just not think about something. How many of you tried that? <laughs> when you're being oppressed by a vexation, right? A vexing spirit. You have to replace it with the Word. You have to resist by the Word. Amen? <laughs> so the battlefield is our minds. And we have to win... You're not going to win the battle out there if you can't win the battle in here. Yes. And as I said, the devil wants to get you on the couch and beat you down and make you feel like a loser and so fear fearful. Somebody just told me recently, I don't know if this is true, I need to look it up. But there's, there's like an epidemic of people afraid to leave their house now. Yes. 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 That's, that is a spirit of fear. Yes. And it's sitting on top of people. The very thing you need to do is get out of the house. Yes. <laughs> yes. Go meet some people. Connect. Yes. Shine as your light. A Christian definitely shouldn't be that way. Because your light is shining. Yes. You're salty. You need to get around as many people as you can. <laughs> yes. Amen. 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 <laughs> Go for it, Gracie. Shine your light out there. I know you do. <laughs> Amen. Gracie, you, go, go see Gracie at Panera. She's just such a, a delight. And it, she just walks in, how are you doing? And just connects with everybody. Yeah. Bless you, Gracie. Yeah. Yeah. So Derek Prince talks about the word Hades. And I just want to speak increase over you, Gracie. Amen. 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 I just speak increase over you, blessing over you, that God would give you more people to impact. Amen. And a joy. That joy is coming back. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That joy. The devil can't steal your joy. Amen. Whatever life's thrown at you, you just bubble up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Strongs, the word for Hades. So it says the gates of hell. Hades means the not seen. Yes. Mm -hmm. So properly, Hades is the unseen place, referring to the invisible realm. Mm -hmm. So believer, you have, to, you have to, in prayer, obviously see, and through the word of God, see that there is a realm that we are contending with that's not just what we can see, feel, and touch. 
And that's, that is where the, the spiritual war is. So Derek Prince says, the word for hell in Greek is the word Hades. The root meaning of the word Hades is invisible or unseen. So Hades is the unseen world, world of Satan's kingdom. And that's where we're to go plunder. You can't enter into a strongman's house unless you first bind the who? Strongman. The strongman. Yeah. Amen. You know, guys, I, there, some of us have familiar spirits that are binding our families. They come into your house, they bind you, and they just do whatever they want in your brain, your mind, your family. You've got to start binding that strong man and say, get out of my house. You, you know, and you guys, we have to have a discerning of spirits. You know what those spirits are. Because they're, they're, fre they're frequently connected with the sins that run in families, right? Uh, depression is a real one, right? You've got to give, if it's a name, so try this next time. Say, Lord, what spirit am I dealing with? And, and ask him. He'll say, a uh, name will pop in your mind. Like depression, for instance. Or unbelief. And, and you say, or poverty. You say, in Jesus' name, I bind a spirit of unbelief. Because yeah. yep. it, it might not just be you. You're like, oh, Jesus, I believe with all my heart. What is my problem? What is the spirit resisting you? And its name is unbelief. Yep. So you say, I bind the spirit of unbelief in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen? In this room. <laughs> yes. Spirit of anger, whatever it is. Anxiety, yes. anxiety. fear, worry, worry. panic. You know, whatever it is, you bind that spirit. You say, get off of me in Jesus' name. Yes. So the spiritual battle is primarily waged in the realm of ideas and imagination. This war is literally manifesting before our very eyes. And we are about to face things that no generation has ever encountered in human history. And yet it's the same story in different characters. <laughs> oh, let me show you. you guys ever seen this movie? Okay, so it's a little freaky. But I loved it when we, we saw it when I was a kid. I love sci science fiction. The Forbidden Planet, 1956, in CinemaScope. It's a little scary, so parents probably preview it before you show it to your kids. The story is basically a powerful ancient race of aliens end up destroying their entire civilization through a machine that has the power to turn their thoughts into reality. Wow. The evil in their subconscious ends up materializing in the form of monsters. They thus unwittingly destroy themselves through their own advanced technology. So that's the cliff notes. Wow. Does this sound familiar? Sound familiar? Wow. What is happening today? Wow. Should we be concerned? <laughs> Your thoughts are now being seen. They're manifesting. We can actually see what your innermost thoughts are if you don't control yourself. You know, next time you're thinking about tweeting, think twice. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit say, maybe don't say that. Don't say something in anger, right? <laughs> Genesis 6, 5 through 7 says, Every intent of the thoughts of his, his mankind's heart, was only evil continually. Wow. Jesus. So guys, that's, I mean, you guys, you know, we're to pray that we'd be worthy to escape the things that are coming upon the earth because they're going to cause people's hearts to fail them. Because we're starting to see into the realm of imagination, which is full of angelic and demonic. So why we need to, to sanctify our imaginations and ma imagine things through the Word of God. That's, that's true. That's good. You know, was it, I was sharing, I think with Michael, I was reading about um, the Celtic saints, and they really encourage people to use their imagination in prayer. Mm -hmm. so sometimes we're afraid of our own imagination, maybe because of our sin or whatever. Sure. But we're to imagine through the Word of God. Yes. Now, obviously not make stuff up, but that's why the Celts would have such a, you know, the, the, the prayers would be very descriptive about the, 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 the fire and the stone and the, the strength of the wind and, and things like this to help them meditate on God's power, right? So that's something we can do. Um, so today I want to talk about, in the time I have, man's attempt to create the ultimate idol and at the same time the importance of knowing the living God. We are about to witness Satan's final desperate attempt to deceive the whole world. So this is real important. We have to remember this. He's desperate. The Bible says his time is short. So he's, get, he's like, you know, when people get desperate, they go to extremes. Because <laughs> Satan, he's going to be thrown into the lake of fire <laughs> forever. And that's his end. Our end is with the Lord in his presence. So I'm going to talk about idolatry and AI. What does the Bible say? You shall not make an image. Yes. 
uh, Ten Commandments. Revelation 13, 15 says, He was granted the power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So this is the Antichrist, and he's going to animate, give breath to the image of the beast. So this is an image. Say image. image. An image is not an actual, it's not a living person. But they're going to give life to this image. Like, we're literally starting to see this. So, um, is it possible that the false prophet will give breath to the image of the beast using technology? It's starting to look like it, definitely. I'm not going to play this, whole, this video all the way, but this is the UN video where Jack Black, starring a T-Rex, decides to walk into the UN and start to patronize us all and tell us how we're destroying the Earth and that we need to get on the board with the green, woke, environmental revolu revolution. But what is that? That's a beast. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what has it been? It's been animated. Mm -hmm. It's speaking. Yes. Mm -hmm. The word for spirit is pneuma, which means breath. Mm -hmm. So Satan is speaking. You guys, the spirit realm is not complicated. Yeah. The devil has to speak through somebody. Yes. Uh -huh. So when you see a video, it might be a spirit speaking. So just be aware. You think, wait, if you get those, you know, goosebumps and chills, and you're like, wait a minute, that's that's not of God. <laughs> that's not from God. So we need to be discerning. So now I'm I'm thinking of changing the title of this message to "Standing Against the Gods of the Metaverse." <laughs> okay, because so I want you to watch this video. At Larry Page and I used to be close friends, and I would yes. stay at his house in Palo Alto, and I would talk to him late into the night about uh, AI safety. And at least my perception was that Larry was not taking uh, AI safety uh, seriously enough. Um, and um, What did he say about it? He really seemed to be um, what it wants, wants sort of a digital super intelligence, basically digital God, if you will, uh, uh, as soon as possible. Um, he wanted that? Yes. He's, he's made many public statements over the years. Uh, that, that the whole goal of Google is uh, uh, what's called AGI, artificial general intelligence or artificial superintelligence. You know, and, I, and I agree with him that the, there's great potential for good, um, but there's also potential for bad. And so if, if you've got some um, radical new technology, you want to try to take the set of actions that maximize probably it, it will do good and minimize probably it will do bad things. Yes. Um, it, it can't just be helpful leather. Let's just go, you know, barreling forward and you know, hope for the best. So super intelligence, an AGI, artificial general intelligence. So they're trying, they're actually trying to create a God. That's what they're trying to do. So um, ideas have consequences, guy, you know, ask this cheery fellow up here. Um, you know, ask these other two cheery fellows. Uh, World War II alone, 52 million dead. And of course, Stalin killed millions, all because of atheistic yes. ideas. Evolutionary, uh, uh, evolutionary atheistic ideas. So these are new, very bad ideas coming from these two men specifically, Klaus Schwab and this guy who's like a false prophet, Yuval Noah Harari, who's just very anti-Christ, anti-God. Yes. Like they basically, if they don't want to become gods themselves through technology, they just really hate God. Mm -hmm. um, so let, I'll read one quote from him. That his stuff is just ugh, disgusting. He says, a hundred years ago, authority was about above the clouds. It was God. In the modern era, authority came down to the human beings, our decisions. That's so arrogant, right? And now the authority is going back to the clouds, but the clouds of Google and Amazon. So this is like the ultimate, this is like the ultimate idol. It's the ultimate idol because it will have, it will appear to have all knowledge. But guys, remember, this is still one little tiny planet. <laughs> God says, behold, I fill the heavens and the earth. That's the living God, okay? So you have this little puny idol that's trying to take over a whole, like, knowledge of <laughs> one planet. So this, is, this God is in the cloud, or is going to be in the cloud probably, will be the ultimate synthetic man-made idol. Artificial. Remember, I'm saying living. Artificial. And it's an image. So we have to be aware. And I told you guys that 
the heart of man is to worship something. They exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator. Men and women turn to things. And uh, I was just watching a volcano video where the scientist, the scientist, he's like, I look at this volcano and I just see this divine presence. Right? He doesn't believe in God, but he's going to worship the volcano as probably an atheistic evolutionist because that's the heart of man is to worship. So our natural response is to worship. So a couple warnings as I wrap this up. A warning to the wise. AI is already being used. I've seen videos already to animate pagan deities. You guys, you're going to start seeing all the gods. You know, the, the prophet Rabbi Khan said the gods are coming back and not... That these are the false gods. You're going to start seeing the Norse gods animated. You're going to start seeing the Egyptian gods animated. You're going to start seeing all these gods animated, Hindu gods, speaking and talking and living, seemingly alive. The second thing you're going to need to watch out for is that people are going to start animating the dead. If you want to hear grandma talk, you can do that. What does the Bible? It warns us very severely against trying to talk to the dead. Yes. The hate, you know, Hades has had two parts, right? The, the place of the dead where the dead go, where we can't connect with them. And then the, the realm where the, uh, the demons tr try to imitate uh, familiar spirits, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So the Bible strictly warns us against idolatry and attempts to speak to the dead. You shall not make an image. So guys, these things are coming. But what did Simon Peter say to Jesus? He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Matthew 16, 16. Jesus, as I said, is flesh and blood. He is a living, breathing man. Jesus is the alpha and the omega. Amen. If this frightens you, Jesus is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He knows everything that's ever going to happen. And he's standing at the end with the verse to say with... With the first and with the last, I am he. He's going to wrap this all up. The Lord says, Behold, I fill the heavens and the earth. Jesus is the firstborn among many brethren, raised from the dead, never to die again. He holds the keys of death and Hades. Our God is the omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God. Yes. Praise the Lord. So guys, we have to hold on to the word of God like never before because our faith could be sorely tested if we don't have answers yes. for what we're coming against so i'm just going to reiterate who do we serve the living, the living and the true god praise the lord <laughs> glory to god well I'll pray and then i think we need to receive tithes and offerings so yeah all right father god i thank you for lord your word i thank you that your word breaks the rocks in pieces i thank you that your word is e eternal forever settle in heaven. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that this message would encourage their hearts. Even as we see uh, terrible things coming to this earth, we thank you that we can know you, walk with you, and bring many to Christ. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This has uh, been awesome. <laughs> this has just been so rich. Uh, my, 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 my. Well, we're so grateful that... Uh, the, that Jesus has shown himself as the way, the truth, and the life, and that we know him and can walk with him. Mm -hmm.